Welcome to the Success Talk Show, the podcast for ambitious leaders who want to get their best results and create a workplace for their teams to thrive. Each week, we share practical advice to help you accelerate your success and grow as an inspiring leader. Now, here's your host, leadership success coach, Donna Siriani. Welcome to another episode of the Success Talk Show. This is Donna Siriani, Leadership Success Coach and founder of Success Compass Academy. And this is the second in a multi-part series on personal branding, specifically how to leverage your personal brand to achieve your goals. But before we get started with this episode, you know, if you're listening for the first time, I just want to take a minute to introduce myself. I've spent my entire career in technology, Started off as a programmer, worked my way up to senior leadership roles in different technology organizations, managing teams across the U.S., Europe, and Asia. And my last corporate role was as chief people officer at a software company. And as much as I love championing a fantastic company culture and winning a best place to work award, I was drawn to leave my corporate role behind so I could become a full-time coach and consultant. So now as a coach and consultant, I help leaders in technology accelerate growth both for themselves personally and for their organizations while creating a workplace for their teams to thrive. So with my coach hat on in today's episode, I'm going to share a few strategies with you of how you can leverage your personal brand to achieve your goals. Now I'm often working with leaders who want to advance their career, right? And those goals could be gaining clarity on what do you really want to be doing next? You know, maybe you're at a crossroads or you want to get a promotion. You're looking for advancement. Maybe you're looking for a new role. And again, it might be that you're not clear what your next step is. And so part of our coaching could be gaining that clarity. But what I'd like for you to do is to have a particular goal in mind as you listen to these strategies. Now, in episode 52, of this series, I touched on how important it is to really be clear on your goals so that then when you think about your personal brand or how you want to be known by other people, then you can really connect the dots, come up with powerful strategies, you can really move into action. But it all starts with being clear on what your goals are. So I'm going to assume that coming into this episode, you do have at least one goal in mind. And the examples I gave in the last episode were things like maybe you want to be seen as a thought leader in the industry, somebody who is an inspirational speaker, it could be you're an inspiring leader, somebody who's influential, it could be again, promotion, advancement, maybe just having more visibility and expanding your impact. So whatever your goal is, that think about that as I go through the strategies. Okay, so I want to dig right in. Now, we, on the next part of this series, we can talk more about you know, some of the details of how you define your brand, but I want to give you three specific strategies or actions that you could start taking right away just to experiment. Now, the first one is when you think about how you want to be known and what your goal is. It can seem a little bit daunting on how to get the word out and, you know, what, what would that really look like? And I want to start off with something really simple. And I want you to start noticing, starting today, what do you say to people when you're in conversation with them? Do you notice those opportunities to basically start planting some seeds about how you want to be known? It could be you're speaking with your boss a colleague, an employee, a client, maybe a senior executive in your firm. But think about what your goal is and what, how you want to be known. So let me give you an example. I was working with a client who wanted to be seen as more strategic and she wanted to get a promotion where she would get to spend a greater percentage of her time working on strategic initiatives instead of more of an operational role. And I hear this all the time, and I can relate to it personally, having been in technology for 35 years, I can really relate to that. You get to a point in your career where you may have this appetite to 
work on future vision and strategy and things that are going to move the needle for the business that are above and beyond the day-to-day -day work that maybe you've been really good at, that you've been doing for a long time. Now, in her case, um, you know, we worked together. She was a client, so we worked on a series of things to help her clarify her brand. She knew what her goal was, right? She wanted to get a promotion in advance to a more strategic role. And we really got clear on what she was good at, her strengths, her values, her passions. We got feedback, right, through a 360. We got feedback on her personal brand. But here's the action. What you say to people is what plants the seeds of how you want them to respond to you and see you and what you want to be top of mind about you. So in her case, it was a senior executive that she was meeting with. And she did this with, again, a few, you know, number of people. But this particular senior executive, she shared with him how she could contribute at that strategic level. Strengths that she had, accomplishments that she'd had, and she planted the seed. Now, by being able to be clear, concise, confident, and really clear on her messaging, she planted a seed that then grew to her being offered a position that hadn't even existed at the time. They basically created a position for her. She got the promotion, she got into the strategic role, and she got this brand new opportunity. Of course, she was very, very excited, but it all started with her being clear on what she was going to say, right? clear on her messaging, okay, knowing what she was good at, what she had accomplished, and how she could deliver a clear message. So what you say to people, even when it's something with not quite that same consequence, but what you say to people in meetings, let's say you want to be seen as somebody who can solve complex problems, then you might be in a fairly routine meeting, type of meeting you, you're in all the time. You can say to your colleagues, you know, I love tackling, as you know, I love tackling complex problems. I'm going to raise my hand to take a closer look at that. And I'll come back to the team with some recommendations, right? You can slip into conversations with just about anybody. Think of it as the sound bite, right? That clear message of how you want to be seen. Okay. Now, this could be, again, when you're speaking with your boss, speaking with a colleague or another executive, what are you saying to them that is giving them the full transparency into what you're good at that you want to do more of? There may be a lot of things you're good at that you don't want to do more of. So you're being very deliberate and actually very strategic about what you're saying to them. Now, I'm going to tell you a story that happened many years ago, but it still stays in my mind as a powerful example of this. I had an employee who worked for one of my managers. She was very young in her career, right out of college. She'd had a fairly junior level position before she joined our organization. And I took her for coffee just to get to know her. Like I said, she worked for one of my managers. And in that coffee break that we had in the cafeteria, I said, you know, so what, you know, what are your goals? What do you want to do someday? And she was confident and clear. She said, someday I want to be working in a consulting role with our clients. And she went, elaborated a little bit on that. Well, that stuck with me. Again, she took that opportunity to deliver a clear message. She was planting a seed with me of how she wanted to be seen and known. And it was probably a matter of, you know, in less than a year, I was approached by a senior executive at the company to take on a big project where we'd be a consulting team. And I got to hand pick who I wanted on my team from my organization to join me in this project. It would require us, you know, traveling to New York City for a few months and all that. Well, who do you think I thought of? She was top of mind because I had remembered it was exactly what she said she wanted. So she was the first person I thought of. She was the first person I asked to join the team. She did join the team. She was with me side by side for some number of months on this project. She then did make that transition full time in a consulting role. And it just led to a whole, a fantastic chapter in her career. So think about who you're having coffee with, who you're having lunch with, the people that you're in a meeting with, what are you saying to them 
And it could be, again, you're saying something about what you want to do more of. You're not necessarily having to share like your entire career aspiration in every meeting you go to, but it just can be that you are passionate about managing change. You love doing data analysis. You love working on problems that the clients are having. You love giving a client presentation, negotiating a big client deal, whatever it is. But when you have clarity on what you want to do more of, then feel free to share that when those opportunities come up. It can be really powerful. Now, I know for me, I would sprinkle little clues (laughs) that I wanted and enjoyed and thrived in working in a global environment. So when my boss had an opportunity for somebody to go and take a very important position in Asia, managing our organization for the Asia region, I was the first person he thought of because, again, I had been planting seeds of what I was interested in all along. Now, I'm going to tell you, one of the problems that I see, or I I should say the challenges or obstacles that I see, is when somebody doesn't have clarity. Very difficult to plant seeds and do it consistently when you yourself are not clear on what you enjoy doing, what you're good at, and what your future goals are. If that's the case, I certainly would love to support you. I do this both with private coaching and with group coaching and an online program with lots of ways to support you. So if you're interested in doing a deeper dive, definitely get in touch with me, which you can do either through LinkedIn or through email. Send me a message. But that is the biggest block that I see with almost all the clients that I've had is They're stuck at the beginning. They're just not sure what step to take first. But let's assume for today you are clear on your goals, what this number one goal is that you have on your mind, and how you want to be known. What do you want to be known for? And how can you slip that into conversation when you're talking to someone? It can be so simple. You know, when I'm speaking with a client, let's say I'm having lunch with a client that I've worked with on a particular project, I certainly will let them know that I've done a significant amount of work on company culture and employee engagement, and I might tell them a quick story. Now it plants the seed with them that that's something that I have a track record on, right? And so if an opportunity comes up, I might be top of mind. So again, you're working on being top of mind with people about something that you want to do more of, okay? So it doesn't have to be a big formal pitch. It can just be casual comment, you know, at a meeting or over coffee or or whatever. So that's the first step. And you can start doing that tomorrow. Be deliberate in what you say to people. That's number one. Number two is I want you to look at how you spend your time. Now, if there's something that you want to be known for, Look at how you spend your time today or say over the past month or in general. For example, I had a client who loved and wanted to really be seen as an effective coach and mentor of other leaders. But the reality was when she looked at her calendar, she was spending very little time, maybe, you know, an hour a week at the most. So you need to look at is there congruency between what you're saying and what you're doing. If you want to be seen as somebody who is innovative, look back at what you've been doing. What exactly are you working on where you're showing up and being creative and innovative? You know, what is it? How much time are you spending researching new techniques, new tools, new models? How much time are you spending experimenting, brainstorming? You know, look at how you actually are spending your time in comparison to how you want to be seen. Now, in my case, I will say that when I first started coaching, you know, I had a full-time job and I was just coaching on the side just to get certified. I had a very ambitious role and very, you know, global role required me to work lots and lots of hours. But I took little snippets of time when I was meeting with somebody to put my coach hat on and practice some of my coaching skills to improve their situation, but also give me that opportunity to try on the coaching skills to see, did I really want to make that career switch? 
I'll give you an example of somebody I interviewed to hire is when I was chief people officer at a software company, we wanted to bring in people in the leadership level who were innovative. That was something very important to us. It was really part of our culture to be creative, think outside the box, bring in leaders who would inspire innovation. So I would ask senior leaders on the interview, so give me an example where you've been innovative recently. And I have to tell you, quite often, the person really didn't share anything innovative. So it's one thing to say it, right? But you start to lose credibility if there isn't enough to back it up of how you're spending your time. If you're going to say, oh, I'm really great at solving complex problems. I'm great at negotiating big contracts with important clients or, you know, giving presentations at industry conferences, whatever it is, how much time are you actually spending doing it? So if I said to you, oh, geez, you give presentations at industry conferences. How many have you given this year? And if you tell me you gave one, then I'd say, mm, geez, you know what? You just lost a little bit of credibility if you're really not spending that much time on it. So you want to make sure there's congruency between what you're saying and how you're actually spending your time. That was the second step was, how do you want to be known? How do you want to be seen? What do you want to be top of mind about you? And now take a good, honest look at how you spend your time, okay? And do some reality testing. Now, as a result, before I move on to the next one, you may see that you're not spending enough time as much as you thought you were. You know, maybe out of a 40-hour work week, you didn't spend any time on what this is. So if that's the case, whatever you discover, then what I would want you to do is take the initiative to seek out assignments that will align with your brand and your goals, right? So in the example of say, being innovative, if that's how you see yourself, and maybe you have been, but not lately, then you need to be on the lookout for opportunities where you can roll up your sleeves and flex those creativity and innovation muscles so that you've got something hot off the press that you can show people, showcase, or spotlight that you are capable of. Because when other people are thinking about you, they need to see evidence that you are actually highly successful and, and competent in that area, whatever it is that relates to your goal. So take the initiative, seek out assignments that will help you align with your brand. Now, the third step, which goes hand in hand with that one, is to spotlight or share your accomplishments. You don't want to be the best kept secret. I'll take the example of a client that I had recently who is a very charismatic speaker, very articulate, charismatic, very inspiring, just passionate about speaking to large audiences, really good at it, gets great feedback. In his case, he really needs to make sure that the people who organize, look for speakers, schedule speakers, that they know how often he can do it, has done it, the feedback that he gets, he needs to be letting those people know, hey, you know, I gave a talk last month. Here's some of the feedback that I got. Oh, if you've got an opportunity coming up, you know, I'd love to do, you know, more of them. Keep me in mind. Again, you don't want to be the best kept secret. And you can do it in a way that doesn't feel like you're bragging. You could say, I love doing it. You know, and here's some of the feedback that I got. Now, it's not that you're bragging. It's just you're sharing facts that, when I got the feedback from the organizer, they said people, you know, walked up to him or her and here's what they had to say. So, you know, I would love to contribute to your next event, whatever it is. But you need to come up with some language where, you know, it's factual, but it's also letting the person know, hey, this is my sweet spot. This is what I'm really good at and I'd love to do more of it. Now, if you feel really reluctant to do that, then I hate to say you don't want to be holding yourself back because people don't know what you've done, what you're capable of doing, and they're just not aware. So you do need to strengthen those muscles of being able to say it in whatever way it feels comfortable 
and humble for you if you're not comfortable with, you know, pointing it out. But this could be your boss, a colleague, um, another executive at the company, you know, somebody who's in a department or division or in a position to call on you to do what it is that you want to do more of, right? So you've got to spotlight your accomplishments. Now, if you don't have any recently that show, like, let's say, if I were to say, you know, for many years, I would manage these big, huge change initiatives, you know, change in the organization, how we did things, our architecture, our, you know, basically it was people, process and technology, massive change. Well, I did that for a long time. So it would always be fresh in my mind to point to something that I had just completed as an example. So if the next big juicy project or initiative came along, I would have something fresh to point to, to say, look at what I did here. I'd love to do that for this new initiative. You know, I could position myself. But if it's been several years, then it's really hard to position yourself for that. You want to stay fresh and take initiative to always be on the lookout for opportunities to do more of what you want to be known for. Okay, so those are the three strategies that are really practical that you can start today. What you say to people planting those seeds every day, look at how you're spending your time, and then be sure to look at accomplishments that you can share with people, right? Because then you will be more apt to be the first person they think of when they need the kind of help that you offer. So those were the three strategies I wanted to share with you today. Now, in thinking about your goal and your personal brand, if you're still a little fuzzy on what your personal brand is, then something that you can do, I'm going to talk more about it in the next episode. But one thing you could do today is go to my website, DonnaSiriani.com. And on the homepage, there's a PDF you can download the personal branding framework. And I walk you through the basics of the five steps in my program. And you know, it's a free document, you can download it, get a really good start on gaining some clarity. And that'll get you started. So I thank you for listening. Good luck and have a great day.